How are you still watching where is now the international day of conservation of the mangroves ecosystem is celebrated every year on 26th of july and aims to raise awareness of the importance of mangrove ecosystems as a unique special and valuable ecosystem and to promote solutions for their sustainable management conservations and uses this international day was adopted by the general conference of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, that's UNESCO, in 2015. So, happy, happy International Mangrove Day. Who is the nature lover here? <laughs> <laughs> the last time I heard about mangrove was I in high when school. I was doing, when I was doing agriculture. Yeah, that was the last time. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, but I like all these days because it keeps also, also um, keeps, um, keeps these, these, um, issues as top of the mind yeah you know the more we talk about it the more people go back and say okay you know what that, that's true mm -hmm. what do i it's really know well, about yeah. how can i conserve it how can i be part of you know you know preserving the ecosystem yeah Isi, are you a, um a, a nature lover oh absolutely i am usually what i used to do <laughs> especially in my single days i used to go to um, the resort, the conservative center to actually enjoy the environment and enjoy the, the natural scenery we had there. And there are other places I've been to that, you know, you get to enjoy the, um, get to enjoy nature basically. So yes, I do love the natural environment nice, nice. for nature. All right. So... <laughs> What did you find for us in the news, Isi? Okay, my story is on um, education. And I'm quite excited that we're talking about education today. Um, it's on the, the top, the headline that got my attention is stakeholders worry as shortage of primary school teachers hit or your state. For me, while parents and teachers are worried about the the shortage of teachers in Oyo State, it might spread across the country. It's not just in Oyo State at the end of the day. It might actually spread across the country because um, the rate of, um, the way teachers are being presented to the learners and to the society is not encouraging. So a lot of people will not want to even take up that line of work basically and we have the fact that the numeration the remuneration of teachers is nothing to write home about so nobody would want to also again apply because i think this um i think about a, a year ago um you back actually um talked to the government to employ more teachers but again, who would want to work in an environment that is not enabling and is not friendly to their pocket? And I also think that the 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 um, the uh, people of Oyo and Nigeria in general, because like I said, said earlier, that it's not just about um, Oyo State; it's going to spread across the country because teachers take home is not going to take them home anymore. A lot of teachers are also going through a lot because last term we had teachers actually resigning from their place of work because they don't have enough money for transportation. So not just in primary school, but it will also transcend to secondary schools as well. So we need to look for the root cause of why the teachers are not coming on board to actually be in primary schools. And we shouldn't also forget the fact that the deplorable situ um, um, environment in primary schools, especially public primary schools, is also one of the reasons why teachers will not want to work in a public uh, primary school. And I think that's part of the main reason. So they should also look back to, well, you know, they should go back to the drawing board that the, federal, the government should go back to the drawing board and look for ways to bring in new teachers with innovative minds to be able to help the learners achieve, um, achieve their learning goals. I was just going to say that it's also possible that, you know, this is all your state, right? Um, 
there's, there's, so even when we complain about it, brain drain, that's our uh, brains going out internationally, within Nigeria, there's also brain drain amongst, you know, interstate uh, migration. So where people would say, you know what, they believe that a teacher will probably earn birth, um, best in Lagos. Yeah. So they would have a better income and all of that. So even within Nigeria, there can be also those interstate kind of like migration. Yeah. So I, I think the best thing to do, right, you, you must incentivize um, that profession. You must find a way as a government to incentivize that profession. I, I, I wanted us to even have that conversation around the education because we, we know Mokri had posted something around even the cost of education, right? Yeah. And how um, a lot of people that are abroad, for instance, 60% of their tax goes, you know, from their, you know, just imagine you earning an income and the government is taking about maybe 60 or 40% of your income. Part of those income that is taken is to push, pump it towards the free education. Mm. And some of us are bragging, oh, there's free education there. We don't have that kind of system here. So in that kind of system, you didn't have good teachers. You have, you know, better classrooms better tools to work with so there's just so many things that can translate into funding the educational space right? Right. So, the yeah. teachers are treated with a lot of respect unlike yeah. what we have in nigeria where the teachers are not appreciated for what they do or what they represent no, so i won't even blame so let me tell you how i feel like the sucks i think you know because we're going to talk more about education the problem i think that we've had over the years are you don't see people graduating with the first class or someone coming out with all A's, you know, and all of that from their way, going into the university or the teaching in colleges to go and study that they want to become teachers. Yeah. What you see, the system is, you see those people that have like a very poor uh, scores uh, and they could not get into university, they couldn't get I into polytechnics. Um, yes, yes, they could not get into university. Education. Even the ones that get into university, they cannot do the straight, you know, there's the education course and the, the straight course. Yeah. Because I studied physics. People, some people studied physics education. Mm. Physics, physics education is come on, kind of like the entry level is lower than when you're it's going lower. to study physics. Yeah. So it, it's completely different. So, I mean, if we start to correct that thing from there, we can now get better teachers that will be respected, like what you said, Isi. Because again, if somebody that graduates with, you know, top of, cl of their class and everything, and, you know, your hand, I mean, there's, there was a time in this country where teachers, lecturers used to turn down oil and gas jobs for lecturing because the, the remuneration, the life, everything, the perks that came with that position was so, so good, you know, but it's now, fantastic. you know, the thing is so lopsided. So, I mean, if we really must solve the problem of education, right, we should not even just leave it at the uh, that level. It, we should just start to overhaul the entire system, even the process of educating the educator. So the teacher themselves, how do they get educated? Are they the best minds that go into teacher colleges? And what is the state of the, teacher, the teaching training centers, right? The teachers' colleges. What is their state? Once we start to once we start to solve the problem from there, we might eventually just find a headway. But let me come to you, Jennifer. Deco, we'll come back to this education subject. All right. Um, so for me, the Ogun State Governor Dako Abiodun has approved a cash palliative of ten thousand naira each. For public servants and pensioners in the state, um, according to him, he said that um, that paying this special allowance is nothing novel or new to the system. It's just that in this instance, they have designed this alongside the members of the labor union, so they've had meetings with them, right? And then after several meetings, they have agreed that ten thousand naira will be given across board from level one to level seventeen, and that this will create some sort of um, relief to civil servants and pensioners that have to move every day. So basically, he's referencing the current state of the economy, and then he feels like this ten thousand naira would at least be some sort of relief for them, and the ten thousand naira will be given to them for the next. So three I, months. I would like to I would like to speak with the governor. What mm. really? Because me, where I know we are eight years so do you understand? The truth is that ten thousand is nothing. Yesterday yeah. we were on air, I think when we just got off air, Uti saw a post, a notification on her phone that said some bank, but we have not confirmed it, gave a hundred percent salary increment. A hundred percent of your salary. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. That's how that's how, like literally, if we really must subsidize what we are going through, we should earn maybe like two or three times what yeah, we are earning. Well, so, yeah. do you understand? To augment it, because the truth is that it's really a drop in the ocean. So, I, I like the idea of fine trying to incentivize or probably 
uh, cause some kind of palliative or whatever. But let us not make it monetary. Let us make it in a way that it is sustainable. You understand? Where you know it can it can multiply. So if you give me this ten thousand naira, what will I do with it at the end of the day? Maybe I just have too many things to talk about today. <laughs> because well, when I saw the story, right, and he said ten thousand in the next three months, and I calculated it, that's thirty thousand naira for three months. What would thirty thousand naira do? Because I mean, what people are currently living on, things have just doubled or tripled. Petrol, or yeah. Is it 25 liter petrol yesterday, it was 29,000. Mm. So, what will 30,000 naira do? That keg of petrol, how many, how, how long will it last? And these are the same civil servants or pensioners who are actually sending their kids to universities like Unilag and the rest, where we heard that Unilag has re increased yeah. their fee from 19,000 to. Long. Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. The, the expenses is a lot. Like, um, I, the exclusive I had with PK on, on Monday, the private sector must truly really step in. Yeah. We must find a way to find. A, a, a working formula mm. where we have something a lot more sustainable and structured for some of the challenges that we're facing. Government cannot do this work. Yeah. I'm telling you, they should just hand it over to the private sector. But will they do that? If they want to succeed, they should. Do they so want to succeed? I have a good news today. I like mm. this story particularly. Let me see. So Kogi Popio, who built the electric tricycle and SUV bags scholarship, uh, the management of the Korea Nigeria Friendship Institute of Vocational and Advanced Technology. You see, say Korea is mm. mm -hmm. Where we want to solve our problem, we must empower our institute, our te our technical schools, schools and yeah. vocational schools. Yeah. That is the beginning. You tell us that we are serious. It's not all you, everybody that must go to university. Uh, so mm -hmm. the Korean um, um, Nigerian Friendship Institute of Vocational and Advanced Technology. Um, uh, school in Lokoja has offered full scholarship to three pupils who built a sport utility vehicle at an exhibition. Um, the news agency of Nigeria uh, uh, reports that the beneficiaries of this scholarship are pupils of St. Peter's College, Ida, who recently wrote their secondary school leaving certificate. That's the Wayek. They just wrote Wayek. Interesting. These pupils are Samson Emeje, he's 29. Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination. 29. 29. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yusuf, are you at 20? Me. Don't blame him. At least he tried. Huh? He tried. He's, he's better than some people. Samson Emeje is 29. Yusuf Ayuba is 20. And Tenimu te, te Abubakar is 18. They had wow. invented and exhibited an electrically powered tricycle. An SUV at the 2021 2022 Statcom Science Exhibition. God will bless you people because this is part of the solution that we're looking for in Nigeria. Yeah. I've said it before. I saw that the guy that converted the generator to gas, I saw the SUV. Uh, I didn't even know that because I saw one, I think I sent it to the group. Mm. I thought it was in Ibadan, but they say that, um, no, 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 actually, the one I saw was a, it was a truck. Was not an SUV, mm. so maybe this is even a different one. Different but one. these are the kinds of innovations that we need. We can't rely on fuel. Yeah. Renewable energy is the future, right? So if we have some of these things, and imagine the government steps in, right, empowers someone like uh, what's it called, an innocent to mass produce this formula. You know, there's push or there. We don't know what can happen. You can actually find a way to start to build what we what we need, as opposed to us just always depending on imports. There are, there are people with great minds that are innovative. Let's start to focus and solve our problem by ourselves. On that note, let's talk about education. Stay with us. We'll be right back.